Hello back. It's the next day now and uh, painting is bone dry. So I'm going to do some work on the details of the face now. So I'm going to zoom in on the nose. That's about as close as I can go without it uh, starting to blur. So the nose now I want to define a bit more strongly. So I'm going to use the same mix for the dark that I used yesterday, which is Burnt Ember and Ferns Ultramarine Blue. So it's quite a strong dark, okay. And at the ready, I've got a size 3 brush that I've moistened and flicked. So when I need to soften the, the nose colour away into the top of the snout, I'll have my moist brush ready to do that. Here it is. Okay, so I've moistened it, flicked it. Uh, I'm not wiping it in um, a, a cloth because I want to keep a little bit of moisture in there to help me soften these edges away. I'm purposefully leaving <coughs> the holes for the nostrils for a second, just so that I can see where I am with the shape of the nose. <coughs> I can always fill those in at a later date. I've redrawn the nose shape, by the way, because I need to see where I'm going, obviously. So if you find that your drawing, you know, has got lost a little bit with all these subsequent washes, just redraw as best you can. You know, the main features like the nostrils and you know, the edges, the extremities of the nose, so that you keep the shape well, well. okay. <clears throat> right, so I've got some dark on there now and I want to bleed this up now. So with this moist brush, I'm, I'm rotating all the way along the bridge of that nose, a little bit away from the black. And now I'm going to touch into that black and coax it to bleed out into that little um, buffer zone I just painted in clear water. So that'll bleed up and fills nicely with the snout. I'm now going to add a little bit of just burnt amber, like that, and carry that up a bit further into the snout, and blending and dragging like that. I'm looking at just how far the, that brown. Uh, coloration on the snout extends. Looking at my reference photo and it comes up to about about here. And it sort of softens off into white about there. Oh dear, sorry I, I missed that then. Okay, so that's um, brought that colour up a bit more. I'm going to add a little touch of burnt sienna to that. Just a little bit. Just add a little bit of a warm hue there. And I'm pushing the heel of my brush flat into the paper. And now with this moist brush again, I'm just going to blend that edge away to nothing there. Right, so let's see how we're looking now. I think I could add a little bit more dark just here. The dark is a bit darker, a bit a bit further in, I sense, so it's a bit wider, it's a bit black the black's a bit wider on the left hand side there. Okay, moistening and flicking my brush again and I just want to unify that black with that brown patch there so I'm just going to softly blend that in. Alright, so I'm going to leave that for a, for a minute now. So just under the nose, 
um, is a sort of soft brown, you know, sort of shadow. So I'm going to touch that in a little bit to the base of the black of the nostril I've just painted. And again, encourage that to bleed down. And then it's a bit rounded there on the, that white jowl. And it comes out to about there on the right hand side one. And again, it curves down like that. And straight away, I want to soften those edges that I've just painted. So I'm going to soften those again with this little moist brush, the size 3. This time, because it's a smaller area, I'm, I'm laying my brush quite flat. And right at the edge of that soft brown passage, I'm letting the tips of the brush go in and soften that edge away. So I've got a very gradual go turn from the brown to the white. And same with the other one. Very quickly you have to do this, because if you leave it go for more than half a minute, that soft brown edge will have dried too hard and it won't bleed so well. And then while I've got uh, uh, it in that state, I think I need to go a little bit darker with this part of the mouth. Because it's much darker where it is immediately under the, the nose there. And hopefully it gives this feeling of turning from the dark into the light there. I'm going to soften that edge a bit. Uh, I feel that edge is a bit soft so with a slightly damp brush I'm just going to soften that edge make it a bit less hard. Right now I'm going to have a go with the eye now. Let's, let's get some work going on the eye. So the eye's got these, uh, you know, sort of pinky rims in the base. So let's put those in first of all with a little bit of Rose Madder Genuine. Doing, I'll do both eyes together. There we are, Rose Madder Genuine. Now I'll need to leave that dry because uh, the next thing I'll be putting in is a brown. So I'll just let that dry for a sec. Let's zoom back out now and see what else I can do around the, uh, the ears and the head. Um, right, this section in between the side of the face and the side of the ear is quite dark in the photograph, as you can see. And it goes from dark to light on the rim of that ear there. So I'm going to paint in some uh, some clear water just to wet that area. Uh, but before I do that, I'll need to hair dry this very very gently because that will that will get contaminated. And um, actually, perhaps just to, to crack on while that's drying. Actually, let's do a little bit of work on the feet. I can add some just soft uh, greys now so to define the feet a bit more. So some dilute burnt ember, a little bit of French ultramarine blue, a little bit more blue. It's still a bit too brown compared to the early grey I painted yesterday. That's a bit of a blue grey so this needs to be blue as well. Just to sort of tie in a bit more gently. And again, let's test it. <clears throat> yeah, that's just darker than what I've got there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add <coughs> some sort of shadow to the pads and sides and also where they come out from the dog's body just want to show the sort of separation in between those toes just suggest it 
the shadow there. Okay, now I need to soften that off because it looks very hard. So let's soften each one so it bleeds away a little bit more gently. And finally, I'm going to pop a bit of much darker uh, French ultramarine, almost black there. And then a tiny, tiny bit of tissue paper rolled up tightly. Let's just pull out the little white nubs on the end of the toes there just to keep that sort of paw shape and just pressing in so I've got that now okay, let's do let's do this one so same again with a small brush I'm going to paint the stronger grey uh, maybe across there a little bit just to give the idea of uh, form. So I'm putting some good wear. Leaving the tops of those toes white, mostly. Just this blue sort of going up into the little clefts in between the toenails. Right, I want to moisten that all now. So slightly moist brush, just, just Drag it, uh, drag it, and moistening it right at the extreme of that shape. Then rinse my brush again, flick, moistening it now down onto where the toes curl over. Moisten again, flick, and soften. You've got to do this quickly because it's already starting to harden, I can see. So maybe do, you know, maybe a couple of toes at a time instead of doing the whole foot, whatever pace works for you. And then I'm going to go in with slightly darker now and drop some darker tone. To suggest the, uh, the toenails. And the darker tone in the cleft and on the pad. And when I drop this dark shadow in, that little uh, bend in the foot, it gives it a bit of 3D feeling. So again, soften that off. Because we don't want the feet to be grabbing our attention too much. Let's do this one. So again the dark colour under the pads and a bit of a shadow up the right hand side and maybe a little bend in this foot as well as this is hind leg. I will be making these nails much darker at the end. I'm rinsing my brush and flicking it now and then rotating right at the edge of that pale blue grey colour I put on the foot and blending that up in there. That foot is more indistinct because of course it's further away. So let's add just a little bit more dark because those pads are quite dark there in the photograph. Leave that at that, leave that there now for a second. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to, to, to working on the eyes now, so I'll be back in the next in the next clip. Okay, so to work on the eyes now, <coughs> this is another photo with Basil's eyes. Lot of loveliness going on here. 
you know. So I want to do this in stages now, okay. So a small brush, so size three. And the colour of that eye is sort of a raw umber colour. So I'm going to paint that. in above that pink um, corner of the eye where the skin is looking rather bloodshot okay so that's the um, raw umber going in <clears throat> now while I've got it moist I'm going to add a little dark crescent of burnt umber quite viscous and French ultramarine blue to make a strong dark because right above the eye there's the uh, you know the upper lid and that might bleed into the raw umber a little bit because of course it's still moist and that's okay because I want it to to do that. Because it'll give us a more natural setting for the eye. And in fact in this one I'm going to encourage the uh, darker I'm putting on to bleed in. So it would be soft. It'll have a soft edge on top of that raw umber that I put in first of all. And then when I've got this darker brown, I'm going to edge that, uh, you know, pink. Actually, a bit of it is lost there, the eye, so it comes down and goes out a bit. And then cuts across that pink a little bit there. And then there's a scoop. And then a little point there. Okay, so I'm just trying to sort of give the eyes their setting at the moment. Right, so that's sort of darker in there. Comes down point. It curves round there, and we lose a bit of the pink there as well. You know, it's a case of colour on, and then you you might actually lose some of it. You know. Right now, what I what I can see now is a much stronger arc of uh, that dark brown black right above the eye so I'm going to put that in now to give the eye some height and this uh, little bit of a feeling of uh, eyebrow there as well So all these extra dark layers give the eye a bit more of a, a gradual setting, you know. It's a bit darker there and darker there. And then I'm going to go back in <coughs> and redo the pupil, uh, 
which is black obviously right I want to soften I can't go in any closer than that okay that's the closest I can go see um, that black next to the row amber it's quite hard so I'm going to go in with a very small <coughs> zero zero well actually it's a one watercolour brush and I'm just going to tiny bit of work now rotating on that hard edge so that it dissolves it ever so slightly so it's not so set and same with this one just lose that hard edge and with the hard pink edge I'm going to just soften that as well so I'm softening all the uh, elements of the eye into each other now While it's still moist, I'm just going to add a tiny bit, a tiny bit more of the pink, just where I see it uh, featuring in the eye. It's more towards the bottom lid. Okay, so I'm going to pop that in there. And once again, with this slightly moist small brush, soften that so it's not so hard. Then, with a very small brush, let's just add a tiny bit of moisture all around those darks that I placed around the eye to just bed them in just a bit more gradually so they don't look too hard edged. And that they fuse more softly with the previous layer. a tiny bit of moisture in this brush it's not soaking wet Right, I feel like I need a much stronger band again of French Rochemin Blue and Burnt Umber. This time I'm going to drop the purple in here and I'm redefining that arc. Right, so that's much softer now because there's still a little bit of moisture in the uh, the eye. It's quite a dark shape in there. This pupil needs to be a bit um, bigger. I'm 
think I need to lose a little bit more of that eye as well. Yes, that's better. Right, and this eye, I need to lose a lot of the light that side as well. Okay, so I'm, I'm sacrificing some corners of the eye because that's how they appear. Um, you know, it's not a perfect circle. There's a moist brush now just softening in that. <clears throat> and there's a tiny dark line around the lower edge of that raw umber I put on. And it's a soft line blurring up from that the colour of the iris, which is raw umber. But it's, it is definitely there. Separating the, the, I think it's the sclera, you know, the pinky white skin from the actual iris colour. So I'm pinching a bit of brown from the iris and just doing that with that line there. Okay, so how's it looking now? <clears throat> so I think it's uh, <coughs> coming a bit now. Again, it's worth looking at things uh, upside down because it does help you get a different view on how things are progressing. So I'm going to zoom in on that now and turn this upside down and see what jumps out at me. See if any shapes jump out at me. Right, yeah. So straight away I can see that I want to bring all of this a bit wider. This is much darker and it's much deeper like that. This eye, yeah, I shaped that badly. It comes over here a bit more. Yeah. <coughs> and that cuts down there a lot more and that's better now there's a little mark under there yes I'm losing quite a lot of the light here because it isn't in evidence in Basil's eyes in this photograph Okay, let's have a look now. Okay, I think that's um, getting a better hung dog look now, so I'm a bit happy with that. Okay, next thing I want to do is to add some highlights, some catch lights. As you can see in this image here, there's some catch lights there and on the rim of the eyelid, and there's a watery a water rim there. To, and it will catch right there. Now to do this I'm going to use a tiny little bit of gouache. A tiny bit on this very small brush. So I'm going to add those So white, very small, very small marks. Just going to brush it gently with my finger. Right on the other eye. A little one there and then this moisture rim is very small. There. So again, I zoom out now. I come into light. I come into light life a bit more. Okay. <clears throat> so I think the next thing I'd like to work on now are these sides of the dog's face because they're quite dark. 
here. Dark, 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 dark. So let's put these in. I'm going to use a half inch flat brush and the colours I'm going to use are Burnt Umber and a bit of uh, French Ultramarine Blue. Because it's a bit of a dark, very, a darker brown than we've got at the moment. So that's the colour I've got there and I've got a, a, a softening brush at the ready, another, again, a size 3 that I've uh, <coughs> wiped the handle of, but then dip back into the water and flick it. So it's, it's got moisture in ready to soften any colour. So let's put this, this dark in now. Right, so around there it's dark. I zoom in a little bit. So it's come in and being as accurate as I can going down there, down the side of the face. Here it goes in there, it's dark there. And then it softens away a bit. And it's much darker around there. And it's definitely dark where it starts at the top of the head. <clears throat> and it's Changes colour as well. So, um, a bit more of that tan colour. There. So I'm going to fuse all of those together now. Actually, I'm going to use my size uh, 5 brush to soften them in to the ear. And there's a bit of tufty fur there, which I'll just do with a drag in action. And I'm pressing the brush and wiggling it just to seal that part to the head. <clears throat> so I want to soften this up carefully to the jowl. I don't want to lose anything there. In fact I'm going to use a, this is a thirsty brush now to just wipe away a few fuzzy hair fuzzy white hairs that are on the face there it's not a complete abrupt change from the white of the jowl to the shadow in the ears it's, it's quite uh, gradual so i'm pressing this thirsty round brush in by the the heel of the brush i'm really pushing it in you know, like that and just getting this soft gradation looks a little bit more natural than if it was a hard edge. Now down here I'm using a slightly moist brush just to blend that colour in. I'll try not to lose the lovely roundness of the gel. I've done it, lost a bit of it there, drat. Okay, let's just sum this in. Right, have I lost too much of that? Yeah. See I've lost too much of the white there. See, it's white in by the eye, and I've lost that, so I need to get that back out quickly. I've got a half inch acrylic brush, which is very good for lifting colour out, so get in there quickly and reclaim it, otherwise, I'm going to lose my dog's face. Okay, got that. You might have to wipe it a few times. Because the paint keeps running. 
and that is a lovely highlight there anyway it's nice and white so that doesn't matter press that and get a nice white highlight there back in so there we go now to keep on um, making this soft I'm just going to add a little bit of water and with my size 5 I'm going to drop in with some more shadow colour under there and soften it away there's a little bit of, of warmth light bounce from the floor coming up so I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna in that mix and then I'm just going to roll that th thirsty brush in there just to make a bit of a gradual bleed from the orangey rust colour to there now on the ear there's a bit of a, a fold there and it's quite light Drag in some of that colour coming of that paint off, and then it goes like that. There's a definite highlighted rim there. But, um, back in this shadow area, I want to redo that because that is not dark enough and it needs a bit more power so I've got to risk you know it seeping back in again but uh, as long as I keep an eye on it I should be fine and that's really dark under there as well so that's how we create depth you know by contrasting strong lights against strong darks in some places and then blending them away seamlessly so that they don't steal your eye too much I'm just watching this up here and checking it doesn't uh, bleed into the head like it did before There's a, an arc of light there coming down around the eye socket bulge there and there's one that starts behind that that's a softer one <coughs> and again I'm just going to add a tiny smidgen of warm Uh, burnt sienna into that And then there's a shadow coming up the side of the face there, just forming a few um, wrinkle lines on the face and a sort of V coming down from under the eye. And they're hard now so with a slightly moist brush I'm just going to soften those lines in and there's a bit of a darker tone now sort of coming around the bridge of the nose and 
going up the middle again, which is darker. <clears throat> so with a moist size 5 brush, I'm going to just Touch into the edge of that dark passage I just painted. Rotate, 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 rotate slowly. Bleed that in. And also soften it over the crown, over, going in the direction in which uh, the fur is going, you know. I'm going to put a much stronger patch there just to emphasise the dome of his head. Taper that away there. Okay, so now I need to do the dark side on the right hand ear. Okay, so let's go in there now with a strong French ultramarine blue and burnt umber again. So this area, quite dark. in the corner of the brush as well for some smaller marks. And then it bleeds down and right under this jowl and there's a curve in the fur. So I'm going to try and create that feeling there as well. I've got to work quickly now. With a moist uh, size 5 brush, I'm just going to wet this area as best I can. If I was able to turn my board, it would be easier. So, you see, I'm just bleed, letting that bleed out now. So it'll go from dark chocolate brown to this sort of paler uh, fur colour. Like that. Rinse again, really hard. And then just take it, let it bleed out to the edge a bit more. And I'm going to soften the edge of all of that into that ear as well. <clears throat> now on the face I'm going to leave that hard for a minute because I don't want it to lose the face too much. But a little, I'll have a little bit of shadow coming on this white jowl so that that bleeds in a bit more softly. Soften that. <clears throat> this looks a bit hard, this band, so I'm just going to soften that in. And then just soften that line a little bit with this slightly damp brush, top of the ear there. Okay, then there's a bit of the ear that is uh, soft, looks quite velvety. So I'm going to use a thirsty flat brush to lift this scoop out. So I'm pressing the brush in, press, 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 and lift. Press and lift. And there's um, that curve which I want to just re-accentuate re there. 
And again, I'm just gonna add a speck of um, burnt sienna. Just to add a little, a few little rich tones here and there. Just to warm it up a bit. And under this uh, area, which would have a bit of warm light bounce. So that's definitely lit there. We want to get these soft. The idea of his soft ears bending. It's a bit hard there. Right, a bit more shadow on the nose, I think, now. There. So that shadow was just Windsor, uh, it was just French ultramarine blue and a bit of uh, French burnt ember. Okay, so now I feel like I need to start work on the chest a little bit here, so... Let's just let's moisten the chest a bit. I'm going to moisten the chest area here. Clean water. His chest sort of comes over the foot, comes over the leg there. Right now, right under the chest, it's quite dark. So I'm using French ultramarine blue and burnt timber. Get this dark in. And it's sort of quite dark up in between those two folds of paler skin, paler fur, sorry. Right, so I want that to bleed down. So I've got a moist flat brush now and I'm just pressing it in and wiggling it and just blending over those folds and the edge of the ear just to let things bleed in a bit and get a bit of shadow going down. I'm picking up some burnt sienna now to have some warm light bounce from the floor. I'll stop there So I, I want to lift out now some whites. So the whites, press in the thirsty brush in right under the ear there. Again, press and drag. A few uh, sort of swirls of white going up into his chest in there. I'm going to keep that one it's quite white there. There's a little fold under his neck. So white, much whiter here. That's definitely a strong white where his chest sort of comes to a point and then turns. It's darker. 
you've got to constantly keep um, lifting out where the paint might seep back in, okay? There's a lot of wiping and lifting involved in this technique. Okay. Right, so I think I'm going to leave it there now and let it dry and come back in the next stage. Well actually before I finish I'm just going to add some very small dark markings that I can see. In the dog's fur while it's still moist enough to blend in I think I'll leave that alone now. Just slight bit of clear water just to knock them back in importance a little bit. Right, and I'm going to stop now and have a little break. This is how we're looking at the moment. So he's starting to come now. I'm, it's good to have a break to see how things need to be developed or not. Okay, so I'll see you in the next section.